hey, hey, Gleb here for creativeshrimp.com. Let's talk about the Boolean modifier of Blender 2.80 and what has actually changed in between the Blender versions. Hint, not much, if anything at all. I just wanted to remove any confusion surrounding that matter. Still, it's a significant workflow within the array of hard surface modeling workflows in Blender and other 3D content creation software for that matter and it carries over to Blender 2.80 just fine. So what's changed? Well, first of all, it still works in two modes, first of which is the edit mode. For example, we can select a part of the mesh that intersects another part of the mesh, then go space and search for intersect boolean. But honestly, nobody uses it like that. Everybody just uses uh, the boolean modifier, which is great because it's non-destructive. And it still works just in, like in Blender 2.79 in terms of that you still need to have two objects that interact with each other somehow. For example, you can carve one mesh from the other mesh and unsurprisingly we don't see the effect because we need to switch over to the wireframe mode or to hide our boolean object to see the resulting mesh. And for that matter, it's great that now we can enable transparency in Blender 2.80 and above but even better, we can play with the per object display options. For example, set the boolean mesh to display as wire or bounce. This way it won't block the view. Okay, what else? Still, it's a little bit clumsy to add the objects manually to the boolean modifier. Uh, it's much better to just enable bool tool add-on and use the shortcuts, which you can see if you expand the shortcuts tab. For example, we can just select two objects and go Ctrl- to apply the carve operation and it will automatically switch the viewport visibility of the boolean object to just show the boundary. That works as if you set the display mode to bounds. But actually, bool tool in 2.79 version of Blender behaved a little bit differently. Look, instead of changing the viewport visibility to bounds automatically, it used the wireframe and if you want to reproduce this behavior, just pop in this checkbox, display as wireframe, and you will be good to go. You will be able to follow along the original 2.79 course without a hitch. And if you haven't enrolled in the course, I recommend doing it, because with this 2.80 update on top of the original content, it's, it's a breeze. All right, this checkbox was something that I thought was important to note, uh, but I will disable it for the time being. Awesome. But why we see the faceted intersection between those two meshes? Because we need to apply the smooth shading for the boolean object. And in general, understanding how the smooth shading works is important for this workflow. And for that matter, I recommend you watching the weighted normal tutorial, also the part of this 2.80 update of hard surface modeling. Uh, but let's carry on. We still have three logical operations available. Difference, A minus B, Union, which is A plus B, and the third one, Intersect, which is the inverse of A minus B. We'll talk about that later, but first let's talk about Union. So you can see that uh, our meshes were blended, and the geometry looks tricky a little bit, but we blended it successfully. Let's delete the modifier and try something else. Let's see what the Intersect operator does, and has it changed? No, it hasn't. So the intersect operator still gives us a cross product between two meshes, if I can put it like this. But you know what? We have one more secret operation, which is slicing. I'm gonna duplicate the mesh by pressing Shift D and switch the second mesh to intersect. The first one is in the difference mode. So we kind of split or separated or sliced two meshes based on the third boolean object as a guide. Well, it's not exactly the fourth operation, okay? It's just a clever use of what we have on our hands. It's called being resourceful. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. So if you worked with boolean operations in Blender 2.79, you know that organization is the key. So instead of using layers, we can now use collections to banish all the boolean objects to the collection number two, which I called boolean, and we can use shortcuts. Nothing changed here. Oh, and we can actually derive the fifth boolean operation, which is slice number two, or how should I call it? It goes like this. First, you create a planar shape, which will serve as a carving object. Then you go ahead and add the solidify modifier to add a little bit of thickness 
to this object, then shift select the original one, press ctrl minus to carve yay for quick paneling effects that can be tweaked long after they were implemented. That's non-destructive workflow, we all love it. All right, folks, what else do we have on our changelog except nothing? It's still very fun to tweak the Boolean meshes and try to visualize how the intersection would look. Still takes a little bit of mental energy and practice to visualize it before applying the Boolean modifiers. And the other thing that is totally worth repeating is that the use of subdivision surface modifier is strictly forbidden with the after Boolean topology. You know, for good or bad, an inherent property of the after Boolean topology is that it is full of angons, polygons with more than five edges. And feel free to watch one of our tutorials from the course, we explain it in a lot of detail. And that leads me to the next thought, is that bevel is still relevant. Who cares that we cannot use subdiv? We can use bevel for that extra edge roundness. Just set the profile to 0.75 segments to 3, disable clamp overlap and play with the limit methods. It's something that we have covered in the bevel tutorial. And at that point of recording I have a slight deja vu moment, because now we apparently need to talk about mirroring. It's a good old practice of 3D modeling established a gazillion years ago. Just make sure that you use the mirror object. To make the mirror modifiers across multiple objects consistent, it works like this. Just eye drop uh, the empty object, which is centered around the Y axis in this particular case. And that's the answer to the question how to transfer the Boolean data to the other side of the mesh. But you may ask, has anything changed in regards to polygon density? Mm -mm. Negative. Striking the right balance between having too little polygons and too many polygons is still paramount. And it's still pretty tricky to find that sweet spot. Because when the mesh becomes too dense, uh, the angons created by the Boolean modifier and the bevel modifier on top of it will result in topology artifacts, as seen for example over here. So definitely sometimes less is more. And in this workflow it's important to leave some breathing room for the beveled effect. And as it usually happens, the opposite is also true. Having too, too little polygons also can hurt the performance of the Boolean modifier in terms of the resulting topology. So if we unsubdivide this mesh a few times, you will see a horrible artifact. Bleh. So would it be fair to say that nothing has changed at all in terms of Boolean workflow for Blender 2.80? Well, the mirror modifier received a wonderful bisect upgrade, so we can easily transfer the information from one side of the mesh to the other side, including the Boolean data. So while it may not be a game changer, it allows us to stay non-destructive for longer stretches of time. But that being said, there are times when we just need to carry on and collapse the modifier stack. For example, when the mesh issues caused by the Boolean modifier cannot be fixed in any other way. It's heartbreaking to let it go, especially if you construct it a wonderful, wonderful system of interrelated modifiers. But let it go and apply the Boolean operations, because we need to demonstrate how to fix the mesh issues somehow. The good news is that it's actually very easy, and when we have access to the geometry after collapsing the modifier stack, we can just slide the problematic vertices away from each other. If they are too close to each other, remember about the polygon density, or we can just merge them by utilizing the merge vertices command. The point is that this sort of mesh issues are usually caused by the combination of the after Boolean topology and the bevel modifier. So getting acquainted with how to fix those basic mesh issues is very important indeed. You can slide vertices away from each other by pressing G two times. So GG, well played. Hopefully no more mesh issues. Well, a non-destructive version of this treatment would be to grab and move the Boolean objects ever so slightly to try to find the position where the topology looks nice. And thankfully, often it's not only possible, but also plausible. Well, now it's a good time to talk about some of the topology issues caused by the Boolean modifier and whether they got better or worse. As a general rule of thumb, avoid non-solid geometry and flipped normals on both the original object and the Boolean mesh. Well, we flipped some of the polygons of the original mesh and it looks almost pretty. But if we do the same for the Boolean objects, 
I, I can swear it will look terrible. See, not very attractive, right? It can be easily fixed by flipping the polygons back. But actually, let's delete one of the faces of the Boolean object. And that will make it non-manifold or non-solid and it will be totally disastrous. Thankfully, it's an easy fix. First, let's recalculate the normals. And second, uh, let's make sure that all objects are actually solid. Or in other words, watertight. Now let's recalculate normals for this object as well, and it should bring things back to norm, if you know what I mean. Alright, so the next thing we should traditionally stay away from is non-solid geometry or non-manifold geometry. Well, missing faces, simply speaking. It will make the boolean modifier go crazy. And now the question to you folks, are the overlapping faces any better than the missing faces? No way, we should run away as fast as we can once we see overlapping faces and stuff like that, um, used in conjunction with the boolean stuff. Look, seemingly inconsequential mesh operation leads to total instability. In order to stop this, we should renormalize things by merging back those faces. Alt M, merge by distance. After doing this, we will hopefully see the prompt that we have removed 55 vertices or something like that, and that will signalize that we are on the right track, as usual. Oh, one more new thing of Blender 2.80, which is Harden Normals feature for the bevel modifier. I'm tempted to say that it works like a hot coffee on those sad rainy days, blah blah blah, but basically if you have a bunch of uh, boolean operations and um, they caused mayhem to your topology, then chances are you will be able to fix the shading issues, like you see here, simply by checking the hard normals checkbox. It will work its weighted normals magic and you will see that things are not that bad as you initially thought. So thanks to Blender developers, this is one of those cool 2.80 features that are worth exploring. But let's get back to things that haven't changed. For example, booleans are still dynamic, you still tweak it on the fly at any stage of your workflow. That is to say, if you haven't applied the modifiers yet, hopefully not. And that is, in my opinion, the unique proposition and the superpower of the Boolean workflow. The ability to tweak things on the fly and to intersect models dynamically to create unpredictable and intriguing results. That is still the case with Blender 2.80. And what about kit bashing? Booleans work great with kit bashing. And let me copy some object from our free kit bashing scene that is included with the course and paste it into this scene with the baby droid that I accidentally created while recording this tutorial. So yeah, it works like this. First we prepare the socket by carving the boolean mesh from uh, the initial object and then we simply plug the kit bash object in and that's it. It's a great synergy between those two methods of 3D modeling and the plugins like HardOps and KitOps utilize that power to its full potential. And what is awesome, we can still tweak the location of those inserts at any stage of the workflow, just like in Blender 2.79, if we retain the modifier stack for that matter. And speaking about the modifier stack, it's very important to keep track of your boolean objects and where they are located in the modifier stack in relationship to each other and to the bevel modifier. So yay, we punched yet another hole in our mesh. What we should do now is probably check uh, whether the bevel modifier is still the last one. And it's not, so let's make sure that it's the last one. Mm -hmm. As we've already mentioned, the plugins like HardOps do this automatically for you keep track of the modifier stack and so on, but it's crucial to know how to do it manually, and that is something that also hasn't changed since Blender 2.79. Oh, and before I forgot, I tried crashing Blender with something like 200 boolean operations, but no luck so far. Well, it definitely can be done, but it's pretty stable. My name is Gleb Alexandrov, you're watching the hard surface modeling video course update for Blender 2.80.